Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 7th grade concept of slope-intercept form. This is standard 7.7a in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 20 off the 2021 released star test. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and then we will look at our answers together. So we have this graph here, uh, no points labeled for us, and we need to match that to our equation. And you notice all of these equations have y equals, uh, they've got a number or a fraction with an x, and then plus or minus another number. So that's a pretty standard form here, and it's called the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So we don't need to figure out y and x because those are going to be variables. Uh, we're really just looking at our m and our b. So the easiest thing for us to first figure out is always going to be this b, which I don't know why it's labeled b and not another letter. They just labeled it b. It's the y-intercept. That means if your x is 0, which means it cancels out the m, because anything times 0 is 0, where does the y-axis get crossed by this line? So if we, if we were to make x 0, then it would be y equals, those two would cancel out, right? y equals b. And where does it on that y-axis if the x is 0? So here's my x is 0, right? So it goes up to right there. So I can get this ordered pair, 0, comma, 3. So if x is 0, then that means y is going to equal 3. So now I know what my y-intercept is. My y-intercept is 3, and it's a positive 3. If it were negative, we would just do minus 3. But uh, now our equation so far is going to be y equals mx plus 3, because when x is 0, y equals 3. Now that's the easy part. Now we got to figure out what this m is. All right, we keep writing this m. This m is slope. So this straight line does not go side to side. Um, I guess it could, um, but most of these lines are going to either slope up or slope down. This one slopes down, and it's pretty steep, but we don't know how much it slopes down. That's what that m is going to be. Every time we get another x, we multiply it by this m, and it makes, in this case, our line go down. Moving from left to right, it's going down. It's going pretty, pretty quickly down. So this is the change and we represent that with a triangle. It's actually the Greek letter delta. Change in y over the change in x. Sometimes we will remember rise over run. So rise always rises to the top. And when you rise, you're going up and down. That's the y-axis. When you're running, you're going side to side. That's the x-axis. You want to make sure you, you do the change in y over the change in x and not reverse that. So that's where the rise over run becomes helpful. And really what that means, you're just going to take two y-coordinates and subtract them and just figure out what's the change. And then you do that for the same two corresponding x-coordinates, and that's it. That's how you get your change in y and your change in x. So we've already got an ordered pair right here. We've got 0, 3. So we want to find one uh, in which it's right on a, a point. We don't want to do something like like this to where it's kind of in the middle and we have to do decimals or whatever. Um, so it looks like we're actually right there, right next to it. It looks like we're doing at 1, comma 1. It looks like we're, uh, we're doing it. All right, so that's that 1, comma 1 is going to be my, that's going to be my um, y2 and my x2. My first y is going to be 3, and my first x is going to be that 0. And if we get that, look at that, negative 2 over 1, which means it's y equals negative 2x plus 3h. 